Hi everybody, this is Corey at More Music in Evansville, Indiana and MoreGuitars.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today we're going to do a little shootout of a couple of great short scale basses. One is made by Fender, it's the Justin Meldel Johnson, easy for me to say, uh, signature bass. It is a road worn uh, Mexican made bass. This is a, a model that's been out for about two years. Like I said, it's a lovely road worn, so it's already broken, feels great. The neck is worn in just the right spots. Does feature a 30 inch scale. Like I said, we're talking about short scale basses. So uh, we're talking about basses that are in that 30 to 31 inch scale length. Um, a lot of guitar players find these very comfortable. I'm a, a lifelong bass player. I've played long scales almost exclusively until about two years ago. I got my first short scale and I immediately fell in love with not only how light it is, but also how comfortable it is to play on a bandstand for three or four or more hours. I think you'll enjoy them too if you give them a shot. Um, this one does feature a nitrocellulose lacquer. I said it is road worn. This is a uh, typical Mustang, so it has the offset Mustang body, uh, the short horns. It features the, the Mustang bridge, which is a string through body bridge. So it gives you a little extra tension. Uh, something that you're gonna like as far as a short scale bass, and I'll explain why here in just a little bit. Uh, it does feature some lightweight open gear tuners. The Mustang split coil pickup, one volume and one tone. This is a passive instrument, so no batteries are required, just like Leo designed it way back when. Um, like I said, this does have a, a 30 and a half inch scale. It has a nine and a half inch fingerboard radius, which is a very vintage feeling radius. I really dig the feel of the radius, the more radius fingerboards. Um, I own a couple of uh, 70s fenders that, that have a little bit harder radius, tighter radius to them, uh, so it's what's in my comfort zone. If you're a, a tap stylist or someone who slaps and pops a whole lot, uh, this guitar may leave a little bit to be desired, but give it a shot anyway. It's uh, well worth it. Why play a short scale? Well. Really good question that gets asked of me. Why do you like the short scales so much? I like them not only because ergonomically they feel good. I don't have to stretch out so far. I'm a, a small, uh, a small man, diminutive in stature, large in uh, attitude. Um, but anyway, besides the obvious reasons, biggest reason is tone you get more of your fundamental note out of a short scale. The shorter the scale, the less overtones you're gonna get. Whereas on a long scale bass, you can kind of liken the tone to hitting the low notes on a, on a grand piano. It almost rings like a bell. You hear that bong, you hear the attack. You also hear overtones over the top of it. Uh, notes that are sympathetic to your fundamental tone and add add to your tone. If you're looking for something with a, a more focused fundamental, think about a short scale. They, uh, they lack uh, some of those overtones, but sometimes that's preferred. This particular bass is strung with flat wounds, which is a really important thing to note because it does affect the tone greatly. If you were to put a set of round wounds on here, you will probably notice a bit more of those overtones. Uh, you'll also notice a, a little more top end zing and sizzle uh, to it. So this is definitely a, uh, a studio bass player's dream in that it, the, the one tone that it has is outstanding and is gonna track really, really well. It has a C-shaped neck. It's a little bit thicker in profile from the fingerboard to the back of the neck than most short scales. Most of them have very thin, very fast necks. This does have a reasonably thin, fast neck compared to say uh, a precision base, uh, more like the thickness and the width of a jazz base. It does have an inch and five eighths nut on it, which is a uh, shorter string spacing. 
than most 34 inch scale instruments. Um, the tone control works incredibly well. Let me play a little bit wide open and then I'll roll the tone back and play a little bit and you can hear the different sound. Really wide ranging sound inside of this diminutive guitar played by a diminutive man in a diminutive room underneath diminutive stars. I think you're going to love this. Uh, comes in black, comes in Daphne blue, both of them are road worn. Uh, about $9.99 is the map price on that. And I think it's a terrific value. Let's take a look at the Gibson. Les Paul Jr. Tribute DC. All right, here I am with the Gibson Les Paul Jr. Tribute Double Cut made by Gibson in their Nashville factory. Uh, wonderful guitar, short scale, so this one is a 30 and a half inch scale, so about a half inch longer than the Fender. Features a uh, bass bucker pickup, um, volume and tone with a coil tap, so you can get single coil tones. Probably hear a little bit of that single coil love coming out of the amplifier right now. Uh, features a, a three point bridge. It is a top load bridge, so a really slinky feel to the strings. Features hip shot ultralight tuners. Does have a set neck construction, all mahogany, mahogany body, mahogany neck, rosewood fingerboard, great sounding, great playing guitar, reasonably light for a, a substantial chunk of mahogany like this you would expect it to weigh a little bit much uh, a little bit more than what it does but it's actually extremely comfortable uh, to sit with and to have on a strap the tones out of this are absolutely ridiculous they sound this bass sounds massive uh, in person and i hope that translates um, well through the video uh, does feature a 12 inch radius fingerboard, so a little bit flatter fingerboard radius. You're going to feel a difference. I don't know that you'll hear a difference, but you'll, you'll feel a difference between it and the 9.5 inch uh, of the Fender bass. Uh, this one is strung with round wounds, so it's got a little bit more growly tone than what the Fender did uh, with the flat wounds on it. Flat wounds, the whole flat wounds, round wounds debate will have some other time. Uh, I find a use for both. You should too. Um, always search out uh, tones that aren't familiar to you and try to get them in your arsenal. Uh, this pickup is a very hot humbucker. It uh, features a lot of output. Not enough to uh, distort your amplifier, but definitely enough to drive your overdrive pedals uh, or fuzz pedals are gonna sound really great uh, with this bass running through it. So let me play a little bit. I'm gonna show you, uh, it does have a coil tap, so you can go from humbucker to single coil, and I'll show that off just a little bit right here. Here we go. 
go in single coil mode. All right. One thing I absolutely love about this bass, and I don't use it very often, uh, is the slap sound out of this, this guitar. Um, it just absolutely has the most wonderful bell-like ring to it. Here we go. This is in humbucker mode. Here it is in single coil mode. My personal thoughts on both of these basses, they're both terrific. I can see uses, um, if I'm playing classic rock, uh, hard rock, I may gravitate towards the Gibson a little bit more. It seems to have a little bit more snarl to the tone, uh, has a bit more aggressive sound, and is, is definitely more mid-range and top-end forward. Uh, the Fender bass, if I'm doing a, a blues gig, a country gig, uh, Americana gigs would definitely be like one of my first call basses just because it has that round, meaty Fender sound, that old school womp that, that old P basses and old Mustangs are known for, especially with a set of flat wounds on it. Uh, one of these days we'll throw some round wounds on it and give it a shot with it. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Check us out, moreguitars.com. We're always there to chat with you, always there to answer the phones. Get a hold of us. Let's talk guitars. Thank you all very much.